we are up for a parole hearing for um, really the most heinous of offense offenses. Um, we have uh, the court hearing transcript, so we can go over it after uh, after the hearing into the details. Uh, thank you, Richard, for for sharing it with me. Um, but with that, let's just jump in. The community of parole is reconvened at time is 9.55 uh, a.m. Good morning, sir. Give us your name and your DOC number, please. First Johnson, 1142 All right, Mr. Johnson, my name is Pearl Wise. To my left is Mr. Roche, and to my right is Mr. Freeman. We comprise your panel this morning. Let me explain the process. I'm going to read some information in the record. Afterwards, we're going to conduct the interview. Mm -hmm. Start with Mr. Roche. Uh, the information I have shows we have no visitors today. So uh, after Mr. Roche completed the interview, go ask the warden for input. And after the warden gives his input, you have the last say. You have an opportunity to tell us whatever you want us to know before we render a decision. Do you understand the process? Yes, okay, I'm gonna read the information to the record now. Uh, Percy Lee Johnson, 114290. Uh, you are listed as a third felony offender. Your offenses are sexual battery, theft, and simple burglary of inhabited dwelling, and armed robbery habitual. Your total deal time is listed as 100 years, 11 months, and 11 days. Uh, your parole eligibility date is listed as August the 16th of 2011. You have a, a just a good time date of September the 16th, 2089, and you have a full term date of May the 16th of 2091. Does that sound about right, sir? Yes, ma'am. Oh, please ask Mr. Roche. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Good morning, Mr. Johnson. How are you? Bless. Good, Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson, you are. You are right at what, uh, 56 years old? Yes, sir. And you're a third county offender. Let's go back to your first arrest. <coughs> when was first arrest? What was my first arrest? Your first arrest. 1984. Yes. Yeah, okay. So what were you arrested for? Uh, burglary. What were you arrested for in 1984? A burglary. Burglary. One second. I don't want to call you wrong. You were arrested for theft in 1985. What were you arrested for in 1984? Uh, it was a uh, burglary, uh, 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 aggravated burglary, simple burglary. Let, let, let me remind you because you tend to forget things that you don't want to remember. You were arrested for aggravated rape. You were arrested for aggravated rape of an eleven-year-old child. Is that correct? Yes. That was intentional in all parish. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And the charge fed out a fed to a charge of sexual battery. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. So you, according to your master record, you are a sex offender, is that correct? Yes, sir. Now, I'm going to read the information into the record. So this information will be there. So when I make my decision, it will be based on this information. Your general conduct 
you know, this kind of conduct is very poor. You have over 35 disciplinary write ups. And your last one was in 2021, only 12, 18 months ago. And that was for defiance. So tell me about that. Why did you get a write up for defiance in 2021? Me and the security officer had a dispute about me going to my work assignment and closing doors because of bad weather. And I reported in I reported to the major about selling drugs. And we got into it about that. And that's really exchanging words with each other. And that's how that happened. Now. I don't see this very often. When I look at your annual uh, progress report, it listed your institutional record as poor. And I don't see that for once in the blue moon. So you've not done well while you were incarcerated. You have a poor supervision history. You have extensive criminal background. The entire community is opposed to your release. The 21st JDC District Attorney's Office is strongly opposed. The Sheriff's Control Parish is strongly opposed. The Chief of Police of Independence, Louisiana, is opposed. The Chief of Police of Tickfall, Louisiana, is opposed. You have a lack of program. How many of programs that you've completed since you've been incarcerated? Uh, 14 or 15, maybe. I got it here. Hey. Okay. Tell me about the program. I got Cajun Raging, uh, Goal Setting, ENA, uh, uh, Y'all training successful, pre-release, uh, church program, baptism, church price. According to my records, according to my records, according to my records, and this record is dated. February 16, 2023, you finished anger management, personal development, victim awareness, and reentry. And that's all. I got more. Oh. Those are, those are hey, go ahead. Those are, Go ahead. I was just telling you, those are his faith based certificates. They're, those, they're not what Mr. Roche is referring to. He does have, he did, he has completed cage rage, Mr. Uh, Roche. I, I don't know if you have that there. I didn't hear you say that. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's anger management. He finished in uh, September of 2022. All right. Yes, sir. Great. Yes. And I finished pre release. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't see pre release. Well, I do see re entry support resources. That was in 2011. Is that he'll correct? Complete. That's up. And he'll complete pre release this Friday, Mr. Roche. Okay, he's presently in 100 hours pre release? Yes, sir. Right. Now, you have a history of violence. Why so much violence, uh, Mr. Johnson? Uh, I believe it was from a household from, from my mother. That's why I, 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 I really believe it came from at that time. My mother used to get abused from my stepdad. You know, I used to run off in the dark while she was getting beat and this and that. You know, She's not here anymore, but, uh, you know, I, I, I come up like that, you know, up on the scene of getting beat by different people. Well, Mr. Johnson, I understand fully. And... There's two things, there's 
two ways you can go with negative act, uh, activity that you see. Um, you can either emulate and do exactly what that person does or use that negative activity to show you what you don't want to do. And you, you try to emulate what your father did to your mother, but it's wrong. Am I right? Thank you. Uh, what is your job at the facility? Uh, I was Kill Walkers, trustee, Class B, trustee. I used to, uh, How long have you been a trustee? Uh, about two years. Okay. Back in the 90s. Tell me, tell me what your transition plan is going to be. Where are you going to work or where are you going to live? Uh, I got a lady from the job fair. I'm going offshore. That's really what I want. Really, that's my goal. Going offshore. Uh, you're going to live in Roseman, Louisiana. Tell me who you're going to live with. I was planning on living with my brother's son, and uh, uh, Christopher Magnite. You know, I talked to him on the phone before, and. He, he got a job, he worked, he had a job for me, but I'd rather go offshore because me being offshore, it shouldn't happen. I could bear if I want me. I'm in the middle of nowhere making honest money, you know. But uh, that's our plan on the fan. Also, I told him if I don't, don't can't go there, I would like to go to a transitional house. Okay, now. Now, um, tell this panel, Mr. Johnson, why we should release you early with almost 60 years left on your sentence. Uh, I learned a lot. I learned a lot. Prison taught, taught me a lot by respect. And my victim. If I could see my victim there, I would apologize to the bottom of my heart. So I knew what I did was wrong. It was wrong. I was young, didn't know nothing. I'm, I'm all over 57 years old. I know now, you know, all so give respect, give it, you know. And well, I, I don't get off in no trouble. I say to, to myself in this prison, I learned a lot through class. Mr. Johnson, you're talking about respect. And why did you get a, a defiance write up only 15 months? Because the reason that like the reason I got it because the person was selling drugs. And the person that the, the security was selling drugs to was God has stepped on the side of me, you know, and I don't do drugs. I, I never had a drug problem. I don't like being around. So. And I felt right. like. And they concentrated for over 20 years. You know the chain of command. If you knew somebody was breaking rules, breaking the law, you could report it to the top official. I did. I did. Okay. He's fired right now. Today. Okay. Uh, Warren, am I, would you like to make any remarks? Well, Mr. Roche, I mean, obviously he's had some conduct problems in the past. And it's about 15 months without a write-up, so I do commit him for that. But I think the most important thing is, for, uh, Johnson, he has not had any sex offender treatment at all. And I think that he needs that for the board considers it. We talked about that. He and I. We talked about that when I was going to recommend, so he's aware of it. But that's my that's my uh, recommendation to the board. Thank you, Warden. Ms. Wise. Thank you. You want to All right. Uh, so um, it's on you now. <clears throat>
Mr. Johnson, what do you want us to know before we render a decision? What you want, you can make your statement at this time. What you want us to know? I want y'all to know that. No, I'm sorry. I, I really am sorry. It was wrong, you know, what I've done, but uh, I learned. I learned. And if I want something out of life, I work for it. I work, I, I do work all around now. And I'm tired. I done had three strokes. I'm tired and I did it all with my mom, my dad, and my wife. I'm just, I'm just, I'm tired, you know. I'm ready to go out there and make a living the right way. That's the really life I do have left. And I want to go offshore and make me a living and buy and own what I got right way. I don't want nothing that don't belong to me. All right, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Well said. You, you thought about that. You prepared for that. Very good. Very good. The panel ready to vote? Yes. Uh, Mr. Johnson, based upon your general disciplinary conduct, based on a lack of rehabilitative program and opposition for the entire community, my vote is to deny your request. Thank you, Mr. Roche. Freeman? Or Mr. Roger and I vote to deny. Okay, we have two votes to deny at this time. Uh, uh, Mr. Percy, uh, I, I read in your record about the strokes, and I'm glad to see how well you're doing. I didn't, I, I'm, I'm just glad to see that you're doing really well. Um, but I concur with my colleagues, my vote is to deny as well because of the, for me, it was a sex treatment program. He hadn't had that. And I'd like to see you a longer time right up free. It, 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 it's time to stop it. It's time for you to just move on past that and the nature of the offense. So I will, um, we begin this expert achievement program, set on the front row and really pay attention. But today, sir, your parole has been denied. It's wishes to you. Thank goodness. Um, now, if you're wondering, wow, has he been locked up since 1985 for uh, doing that to a, what was it, an 11 year old child? Did they actually have laws that protected our, our society back then? And the answer would be no, no, no. <laughs> he, he was released from that. Um, I don't have the records of how long he actually faced for doing that to an 11 year old child, but I do have the court hearings of why we're here today for the crime that he committed in the year 2000, which they didn't touch on in this hearing, which is fine, whatever, you know, let him spend the rest of his life where he belongs. That's the bottom line. 2091 full term date. That sounds good to me. So in 2020, because he was a free man, because he only had, you know, those two other felonies, and hey, what's so wrong about, you know, destroying the life of an 11 year old child? You know, that person should get another chance. Well, he did. And he, what he did, is that um, at 3.30, 4 in the morning, outside uh, outside the happy hour bar in West Wago, um, well, they were approached by a prostitute. Um, and she said, hey, you guys want a party? And they said, how much? And she said, 50 each of you. They got into their car, they drove around the corner, and then they brutally raped her. They didn't have money on them. And... Um, they beat her and um, and 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 raped her in, in just the, the most horrible uh, manner and and uh, you know Richard shared the the dog with me I'll put it in the description and then they left her on the street she was five months pregnant at the time as well. 
Now, I think most likely she would have gotten away with it, but a cop happened to drive by and see her in her state. And, and because of that, she told them, the cop, the cop uh, arrested them. She stood up to her credit and testified at trial, which a lot of times does not happen. And um, and uh, they got locked up, and that's what he's on parole for. But again, just the idea that he could do that to an eleven-year-old girl and then get out again—it's like you know what, <laughs> Mister O'Shea is like. Tell me about your first arrest in 1984. And the guy, the guy is pretending it never happened. Oh, it was for theft. It's like, sir, sometimes you forget what you don't want to remember. I love that when Mr. Richard just shut it down. He didn't even need to get into any of the other stuff. He he went straight for the jugular. He did. And uh, they were never going to give him parole. That's great. That's great. Straight to the jugular and shut it down. Uh, he's going to spend the rest of his life locked up. And uh, society will be safer because of that. And with that, I'll let you go.